Hi guys, and thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Joyce. I give content for Canada Immigration. In case you're new here, thank you so much for tuning. Please consider subscribing. Please just check if you haven't subscribed, click, leave that notification bell so that you get notified whenever I post a video. And guys, today's video is going to be on uh, asylum seekers in Canada. Okay. So first of all, um, um, I'm going to define who is an asylum seeker according to UNHCR definition. Um, they say that an asylum seeker is someone who intends to seek or is awaiting a decision on their request for international protection. In some countries, it is used as a legal term for a person who has applied for refugee status and has not yet received a final decision on their claim. So on this video, I'll also be discussing on what are your rights? What are your benefits? What are you supposed to claim as an asylum seeker in a country, whichever country you are in, but mainly I'm going to put my concern on Canada because that is where I live. So, um, and what is the difference between an asylum seeker and a refugee? Because a lot of people get confused. An asylum seeker is someone who is uh, who has left their country and is seeking protection from persecution and serious human rights violations in another country, but who has not yet been legally recognized as a refugee. So it means that an asylum seeker is before you get recognized, before your accusation, before you are, um, before you are your accusation before your complaints have been received and a decision made by the immigration and then after the decision is made after you accepted after you submit all your documents and they accept you then you become an asylum seeker something else i want to highlight here guys is because every time i discuss asylum somebody will come on the comments and say something nasty uh like joyce why do you tell people about asylum this is a sensitive issue we are here to enlighten and to inform you and i want to tell you guys that asylum seeking is a human right it's actually your human right you can seek asylum for any country that you want even if you want to seek asylum for any country even in africa you can you have a human right to seek asylum. And that is why asylum is under UNHCR, United Nations, because uh, United Nations will always fight for human rights. And that's why they have taken that, they have that uh, asylum as part of their job. So what are your rights as an asylum seeker in Canada? And what are your, what are some of the benefits that you'll get when you seek asylum in Canada? Well, all different, all countries are different. If I compare Canada and the US, because that's where I try to compare a lot, because we are both in uh, North America, um, I'll also tell you where it is easier for you to seek asylum between Canada and the US. And then I also want to hear your comments. And those of you that have gone through asylum on the comments, please comment and let us know where it's easier for you, because it's a human right. Everybody wants to, to seek that. And after they, they get granted, and then you want to settle and relax and start working in that country. So one of the human rights, one of the rights and duties of asylum seeker in Canada, protection from being returned, the advantages. Let's start with the advantage of, of seeking asylum in Canada. What are some advantages of seeking asylum in Canada compared to other countries? These advantages are also recognized by the UN. One of the reasons is that you are protected from being returned to your country of origin, okay? So you cannot be deported or sent back to your country of origin uh, or freedom may be in danger on a, an account of your race, region, nationality, membership of a particular social group or political opinion. This is the fundamental right of all refugees and asylum seekers in Canada. While you're waiting for a decision on your asylum seeker, you cannot be deported to your country of origin, even if you enter the country without a visa or enter or entry permit, you cannot be deported until your refugee application has been considered. 
Canada has also decided not to deport people to certain countries that it believes are not safe. Even if your asylum claim is rejected and you are a citizen of one of these countries, you will not be deported. The list of the countries is regularly updated and can be found here. I will share this link with you on the description. So what they are saying here is that, guys, even at the port of entry, this is something that all of you must know. When you're entering Canada at the port of entry, because I've seen this happen a lot in the U.S., when I watch a lot of documentaries for people going to seek asylum in the U.S., at the port of entry, they can decide to return you. They can just he listen to your case and, and they, they deport you right there. But in Canada, since 2021, it, the rule was passed, the law was passed that any asylum seeker at the port of entry, as long as you come to the port of entry and you surrender yourself to be an asylum, the moment you tell them, I'm seeking asylum, the moment you declare, I'm seeking asylum, even if you don't have a passport, even if you don't have a visa, you just found yourself on, on the borders of Canada, nobody can return you. They say that every human being has a right to be listened. You have a chance to go through the process of asylum seeking, until you go to the court, your case will be heard, and then the judge will decide whether to grant you or to deny you. So this is an advantage of seeking asylum in Canada compared to other countries. Other countries may not have this. They can deport you at the port of entry, but Canada will not. The other advantage of seeking asylum in Canada is non-penalization. In general, people who enter Canada without an entry visa or without passing through an official border point can face a penalty. This penalty does not apply to people who may seek asylum. So if, for example, if you're coming from the US or from whichever border or from whichever country and you're at the port of entry and, and, um, and, and uh, maybe they find out that you need to be penalized, if you just tell them that uh, I'm coming to seek asylum in Canada, you'll not be penalized. They'll allow you in and then from there, they are going to follow up on your case. The other advantage of seeking asylum in Canada compared to other countries is that they will protect you. According to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, any person whose life is in danger in their own country has the right to seek protection and asylum in another country. Canada is a signatory to the 1951 Convention relating to the status of refugees and respect the individual right to claim asylum. The government has set up a system to individuals can have their asylum application assessed and determined. So you'll be protected. It's your right to be protected. Once you come to Canada and there's somebody who has been after your life back home, whichever country you're coming from, the moment you enter Canada, it is your right to, to be protected. And that is why in some countries like Canada, we have got places called shelters. You guys have heard people talk about shelters. Shelters are there and they have got rules and regulations of even the people that work at the shelter. They will tell you when you come here, you cannot enter here past this time. You cannot do this and this. Some of the shelters, especially for women and children, they will tell you that you, whenever you're going out, you have to sign somewhere because they are, they are, they are answerable. The people that work there, they are answerable for your life. If you go outside the shelter and something happens, those people are answerable. That's why they'll, they'll make you sign where you're going. If you get a job or something, you're, you're working somewhere, you're going to school, you have to let them in. Get in uh, you have to notify them so that in case something happens, they'll be answerable. Okay? So protection. You are protected in Canada. If you go to a certain shelter and you realize that um, your life is still in danger, you're still not safe, you can request to be moved or to be transferred to a different shelter. The other thing is that official identity. Official identity here means that the Canadian government is responsible for giving you an ID document to authorize your stay in the country. Everyone must be documented regardless of age, gender, or sex. Those seeking asylum will receive a document that identifies their status as asylum seeker in Canada that includes their picture and unique ID number. I know in Ontario we have got Ontario ID number. And a lot of people think that you can use that ID number as a driver as a driver's license 
um, and that you can use it for, for forever. No, you can only use it for as long as you are a, a refugee or an asylum seeker. So those of you that are in Ontario, because a lot of you, once you claim asylum, they will take your passport. The government of Canada will take away your passport and then so you'll be without your passport. The moment you, you declare that you are an asylum seeker, you can no longer use your passport from back home. You surrender your passport to them. And then now, if they're not going to give you something called um, brown paper immediately, they will give you um, an ID because some places will not accept the brown paper or maybe they do not know the brown paper for that matter. So they will give you an ID for that province. For Ontario, I know they have an Ontario ID. So if you are an asylum seeker in Ontario, go to uh, Service Ontario and ask them to give you that Ontario ID card. It's, it's a small card that looks like a driver's license. The other advantage of seeking asylum in Canada is, is that Canada is non is non discrimination. It's a non discrimination destination. So um, the thing here that we all have a right to live in an environment free from discrimination, regardless of ethnicity, color, or someone's skin, sex, language, sexual orientation, or gender identity, disability, religion political opinion, nationality, socioeconomic position, birthplace, or any other personal attributes. Guys, Canada is one of the few countries that accepted same-sex marriage, okay? So, and because of that, they do not discriminate you against your, your sexual orientation or your gen gender identity. Actually, in Canada, in a lot of applications, especially in government offices, they'll always ask you, how do you identify yourself? Even in the banks, a lot of times they have asked me, who are you? How, wh what sex do you identify yourself? I'm like, can't you see I'm a woman? Then they'll say, no, I want you to say whether you are a woman or a man or a mixture or whatever you want to say. So Canada is one of the countries that has absorbed that part of um, um, orientation and it, it is okay for them to do that, okay? So access to banking services. Refugees and asylum seekers have the same right to public and private banking services as any Canadian. In other words, you can open a bank account, transfer funds, and access all other banking services. A lot of you that come to Canada and seek asylum, you stay for so long without bank accounts because you do not know it's your right. And what we are telling you here that it is your right to open a bank. Once you arrive in Canada, make sure you have a bank account. And these bank accounts, you have to declare all of them to the government. Everywhere you have a bank, you have to declare. You have to, anyway, we'll get to there. You also have to have, um, it's your right to have a card for transit. Like if it's in, in Toronto, you have to have a card for Toronto. Um, what is the name of that card? I forgot. You, you, must, you must have that card to use in the buses. It's your right. You can just walk to a shopper's. Drug Mart, Shoppers Drug Mart is a pharmacy, any pharmacy in, in Toronto or in Ontario. Just tell them you want to purchase a card and then you can use that card in the buses. It's called Presto. You can use that card in the buses. You can use that card in the train, in the go, anywhere that you need to commute. Okay, it's your right. Something else you need to access as, a, as a, an asylum seeker. I said banking, I said that card. If I remember something else, guys, I will let you know. Healthcare. Healthcare, as an asylum seeker in Canada, you have the right to access healthcare through the interim federal health program free. You will automatically receive this coverage and proof of enrollment in the program as soon as you have found eligible to make an asylum claim in Canada. For more information, I'll share the website. Employment. As an asylum seeker, you have the right to work in Canada. You can apply for a work permit by checking the box. Um, for this purpose, your asylum application form, okay? Once you have been found eligible to make an asylum claim um, and you have completed your medical examination, uh, IRCC will automatically process and issue you with a work permit. To avoid delays, make sure the IRCC always has your current address. Address is very important. What we are saying here is that, guys, because a lot of you people who, some of you, some of the haters that are very bitter with people applying for asylum come to my comments and write there that, oh, just you're telling people to apply for asylum and yet there are no jobs. This is a human right for you to work. 
So normally what happens when you apply for asylum in Canada, no, you can apply for asylum at the port of entry that is at the airport, and you can also do asylum inland. That is, you can just enter Canada, and then once you enter Canada, you come and, 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 and maybe search for a lawyer near you, and then go to a, an immigration law office, tell them that you're seeking asylum. They will take you step by step. You don't need anyone. You don't need to pay, and it's free. They are going to apply for you legal aid. This is another human right for you. You can apply for legal aid whereby you don't have to pay any lawyer for them to handle your, your case. You're not going to pay any lawyer. It's going to be for free, free, free of charge. Okay? So employment is your right. The only thing here I have to insist because of um, those of us that are black from where I come from, do not make a mistake of working cash jobs. I will say this in this video because I've seen a lot of people do that and they were deported. Now, when you do this now, you are violating asylum rights because if you work and then you do not pay taxes <laughs> and they decide to, to, I mean, they should actually deport you because this is unfair to the people who are paying tax, the other people who are paying taxes in Canada and even the government that is helping you so much, the government that has, has been feeding you, giving you accommodation for free, and then you work without paying taxes. This is unfair. So you have to pay taxes. You have to report any job that you get with them. Let them know every step of your progress. The other thing is education. This, this one I have to insist. If you have children under the age, age of 18, they do not need a student permit, 18 and below regardless of whether they are going to college or high school. They'll automatically be eligible to attend school when you arrive in Canada. <clears throat> Access to school is free for children. If you are 18 years and older and wish to study, you can apply for a study permit to attend school while you're waiting for a decision on your claim. This is normally what happens. If you bring your kids who are between, uh, who are below 18 years, those ones are under you and they'll go to school for free, whichever school, either Catholic or government, those ones are all free. But if your kids are between 18 years and 20, no, if, if your kids are 18 years and 21 years, or if your kids, yeah, even those ones, those ones will not go to school for free, but you can always you can always find out. What I want to say is that kids that are above 21 years, can you be able to bring your children who are above 21 years? Because this is a very contradicting question. Children who are above 21 years are considered to be adults. So whenever you're doing your application for asylum, they may not, they may not accept them. But what I normally advise, according to my opinion, according to my opinion, include all, all the kids, even if they are 30 something. The only thing that you need to prove during your case hearing is that you need to prove that these kids are depend depending on you. If these kids are going to school back home and the school fees, you're the one who normally pays from Canada, that child depend on you. If these kids have got disability or if these kids do not have any other parent back home, you can claim to bring them even though they are above 18 years you can claim to bring them, even though they're above 21 years. As long as you convince the, um, the, um, the judge in your case that these children are depending on you fully. The other thing is federal uh, freedom of movement. What is freedom of movement? You have the right to move freely throughout Canada and choose where you want to live. Because a lot of you people ask me that, Joyce, I'm in Ontario and I have filed my case in Ontario. Can I move to British Columbia? Yes, you can. Is your right. What you need to do, you can go live in that British Columbia, but during your hearing, in all the occasions that the lawyer need you, you can either decide to do online Zoom meetings, but the day of hearing, you will have to travel back to Ontario. I know during COVID, people used to do hearing online. But I don't think that one is there anymore. I'm not very sure. Just find out. But what I know is that you can live in any province that you want, even if you, you seek asylum in, in a different province. Note that you might be required to report to the government institutions periodically, which sometimes has to be done before you are allowed to move. Just make sure that your caseworker, there's somebody who is called a caseworker who will be assigned to you after you apply for asylum, especially those of you that are in shelters. 
you'll always have somebody who is called a caseworker. Make sure that you're always in communication with your caseworker. Tell them that I want to move out of the province and then they will, they will advise you, but it's your right to move. Okay? The other advantage of filing asylum in, in Canada is that you'll access justice a lot of times for free. That's why I said there's legal aid. All refugees and asylum seekers have the right to get the legal advice and be heard, free of discrimination. If you have limited financial means and wish to obtain the free services of a lawyer, contact the legal aid office in your province. Just Google. Nowadays, there's free Google, as in make use of your Google. Search for legal aid. In Ontario, legal aid in Alberta, legal aid in, aid in British Columbia, and then do the application. There are normally forms that you'll fill there, then return those forms. They will tell you whether you qualify for legal aid. And then if you qualify for legal aid, you'll have a free who will a, a free lawyer who will who will uh, stand with you throughout the journey until the last day of your hearing. And even after hearing, whatever determination will be made, the lawyer will advise you what next. The last one is social assistant benefit. Asylum seekers in Canada may be eligible to receive social assistance benefit depending on provincial regulations. Each province is different. And that's why in my previous video, I told you that a province like Quebec is, is, is demanding a reimbursement of $1 billion from the government because Quebec has been hosting over 55% of the asylum seekers in Canada. And, 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 and this billion, they have spent it on housing, this asylum seeker, and other social benefits that uh, ca um, Canadians asylum seeker get is that you get your, your um, stipend, like a mandre, a mandre pocket money of about $400. You get that legal aid. You also get free accommodation if you want to stay in a shelter. You also get um, you also get what? You also get free food, of course. You also get some of the shelters. They also give you a card, a Presto card for free that you can use to commute. You also get free education, even for adults. Guys, make sure that you, you, you search for schools near you. A lot of you, I, I normally tell you, you can even go back to high school. Even if you had, there's normally, here in Canada, there's, there's adult schools for high school. So if you want to pick up on your um, on your dream and go back to high school you can go back to high school and finish high school in 4 months and get your high school diploma and then from there you can become whatever you want to become a lawyer a nurse an accountant whatever you want to become you can build your career from zero i have seen a lot of you people that have advised to go back to school high school and you get your diploma which is a very good thing you can also go back to school and do trades as long as you are doing a trade or a course that is below eight months. I know some people do more than eight, eight months and their caseworkers still pay for them, but normally it is eight months and below if you, are, if you are an asylum seeker. A lot of trades, you'll take them for four months. I know culinary is four months. I know carpentry is four months. I know plumber is four months. I know truck driver is six months. I know PSW is four months up to eight months, depending with the school. So a lot of these courses, you will do them for free, okay? So what are we saying here? We are saying here that these are, wow, this video is too long. Anyway, that is the end. We are saying here that there's a lot of advantages of filing asylum in Canada compared to other countries, whereby some countries will not get a lot of these advantages. And that is why now they are saying that a lot of people have come to Canada, they have, they have benefited from this all these benefits and now the government is training because in the last three years they have taken the highest number of uh, asylum seekers in Canada and now the, the government economy is training and now they want to give permanent residence to these asylum seekers who are within Canada so that they can allow them now to go and work okay so um I know there's so much that we can talk about asylum seekers. Maybe you can just comment and then I'll get to see. Any information that I share here is not legal advice. This, I was actually reading a lot of it from the UNHCR um, document because a lot of asylum are under UNHCR. You can also read. I'm not giving any legal advice. I'm just giving you an opinion and information to let you know that you don't have to sleep on the streets. You don't have to stay outside in the cold until you die. Look for shelters, look for government 
social, you can always even call the police, call 911, tell them I have just arrived in Canada, I don't know where to start. And I have filed for asylum. Okay, at the airport, you can also tell them I'm filing for asylum and I don't know where to start. They'll guide you. Okay, I wish you all the best and see you in the next video. Please subscribe, subscribe and share, share this video because it will help a lot of people who are torn between making a decision where to go see Kasselam, either Canada, US, UK, and, and then you'll help them. Bye and see you.